In late March of 2022, shortly after the outbreak of the Russia-Ukrainian war, Ukrainian military intelligence began receiving reports of a strange military buildup near the country's northeast border. Satellite imagery revealed the arrival of 42 aircraft at Seshasha Air Base in western Russia, home to the 566th Military Transport Aviation Regiment. As of February 2023, these aircraft are still there, stoking fears that they are being readied for use in a new, more intense phase of this now year-long conflict. Surprisingly, the aircraft making Ukrainian commanders so nervous is not some sleek supersonic jet or high-tech drone, but a big lumbering biplane designed in the 1940s. It's the Antonov An-2, one of the toughest, most versatile, and surprisingly successful aircraft in aviation history. Though best known for its giant transport aircraft like the An-225, the largest aircraft in the world until its destruction by Russian forces in February 2022, the origins of the Kyiv-based Antonov Design Bureau are considerably humbler. Formed in March of 1946 as Research and Design Bureau, or OKB, B-153, the company was placed under the direction of Oleg Antonov, an engineer at the Yakovlev Design Bureau. Antonov's first assignment was to design a general-purpose single-engine agricultural aircraft that could operate from small, unprepared fields. The director of the Yakovlev factory was uninterested in the assignment and wanted to focus on military aircraft, so he gave Antonov full autonomy of the project. Working from the philosophy that the less complex the aircraft, the less could go wrong, Antonov designed the aircraft, codenamed the SKH-1 to be as brutally simple as possible. While the fuselage was of modern metal stressed skin construction, the double wings chosen to provide maximum lift were fabric covered to allow for easy inspections and repair in the field. For even greater lift, the wings were fitted with full-length flaps and spring-loaded leading edges that would automatically deploy at air speeds below 64 km per hour, while the aircraft was furnished with robust fixed landing gear legs and large low-pressure tires for taking off and landing from rough fields. The design also incorporated a number of details custom-tailored for operations in remote environments. For example, an onboard pump allowed the aircraft to be refueled from ordinary fuel drums without special equipment, an air compressor linked to the engine allowed the tire pressure and shock absorbers to be easily adjusted, while large batteries eliminated the need for an external starter cart. The result was a stocky, ugly aircraft that looked anachronistic even by 1940 standards. But Antonov had understood his assignment, and what the SKH-1 lacked in looks, it more than made up for in short field and cargo hauling performance. When fitted with a 746 kilowatt Vetsov ASH-62 radial engine, the aircraft could carry up to 12 passengers or 2,140 kilograms of cargo, take off in less than 170 meters, and land in less than 215 meters. Incredibly, thanks to its twin high-lift wings, the aircraft has no published stall speed and can be flown in full control at speeds as low as 50 km per hour, so slow that the airspeed indicator gauge stops working. Indeed, in a strong enough headwind, the aircraft can be flown backwards relative to the ground and, in the event of engine failure, can be placed in parachute mode and drift gently to the ground. These unique characteristics made Antonov's design ideal for operations in the remotest areas of the Soviet Union. The SKH-1 prototype first flew on August 31, 1947. The following year, it was decided to manufacture the aircraft at State Factory 473 in Kyiv in Ukraine, where it was given its official designation of AN-2. The AN-2 would acquire a number of affectionate nicknames, including Anushka or Annie and Kukuruznik or Crop Duster, while its official NATO reporting name is Colt, following the convention of giving commercial and cargo aircraft names starting with the letter C. Although the AN-2 design was fully refined by 1950, priority orders for military aircraft meant that it didn't enter full production until 1950. By 1960, 3,164 aircraft were produced at the Kyiv plant, whereupon production was moved to State Factory 464 in Dolgoprudy in Russia and the WSK factory in Mylets in Poland. Over 13,000 AN-2s would be manufactured by WSK before full-scale production finally ceased in 1991, more than any other factory. The type was also manufactured under license in China as the Shizatsuang Y-5, with production only ending in 2001. In total, nearly 19,000 AN-2s of varying types were manufactured between 1953 and 2001, making it the 11th most produced aircraft in history, as well as one of the longest continually produced, a record only beating by the American Lockheed C-130 Hercules Trans. Sport. In civilian use, AN-2s have been registered in over 20 countries and used in a variety of roles including agriculture, search and rescue, air, GI, 
geographic survey, short haul transportation, and medevac in remote areas, meteorological research, dropping skydivers, and fighting forest fires. In the latter role, the aircraft is especially infamous as the preferred mount of Russian smoke jumpers, elite forest firefighters, who parachute into action armed with shovels and presumably balls so large that only the AN-2 can lift them. Special float-equipped AN-2s, designated the AN-2V, were also produced for use on lakes and rivers, while several examples were modified for research into wing in ground effect and vertical takeoff and landing or VTOL vehicles. By the turn of the 21st century, however, the now 50-year-old AN-2 was starting to show its age and began to be phased out of service in many areas due to excessive noise, lack of spare parts, and the dwindling availability of aviation gasoline. Yet despite this, the rugged Anushka continues to soldier on, proving remarkably receptive to modern upgrades. In the year 2000, for example, the now independent Antonov State Enterprise introduced the AN-3, a new version of the AN-2, powered by a 1010 kilowatt Gushnikov turboprop engine, and in October 2018, China announced the launch of the FH-98, a remotely operated drone version of the Y-5B, intended for hauling cargo in rugged areas without risking the lives of pilots. Thanks to this legendary ruggedness and adaptability, the venerable AN-2 will likely continue to grace the skies for decades to come, earning its nickname of the AK-47 of aircraft. Surprisingly, in addition to its stellar civilian service, the AN-2 has also enjoyed an illustrious military career, first seeing service with North Korean forces in the final year of the Korean War. The AN-2 was initially deployed in predictable roles like cargo transport, air ambulance liaison, communications, and airborne troop deployment, where its excellent short field performance and large cargo capacity made it a valuable asset. Indeed, the aircraft's absurdly slow minimum speed allowed Soviet paratroopers to practice proper exit techniques by jumping without parachutes into deep snow, while North Korea's People's Army Special Operation Force is known to operate several AN-2s for covertly deploying secret agents behind enemy lines. It wasn't long, however, before the ever-versatile AN-2 was adapted for more offensive military roles. During the Vietnam War, for example, the North Vietnamese People's Air Force made extensive use of the AN-2 as a ground attack aircraft, arming it with various combinations of machine guns and unguided rockets. Perhaps the most brazen operation ever carried out by the AN-2 took place on January the 12th, 1968, when three aircraft attacked Lima Site 85, a tack and navigation beacon erected on a mountain top in Laos to guide American warplanes flying from Thailand to Vietnam. A Bell UH-1 Huey helicopter operated by CIA front company Air America and flown by Ted Moore and Glenn Wood gave chase and succeeded in shooting down one AN-2 with an AKM assault rifle, while a second aircraft was forced down by ground fire. The third aircraft escaped and successfully returned to base. The Soviets also experimented with using using the AN-2 to shoot down American high-altitude reconnaissance balloons, fitting it with a turbocharged engine and a turret armed with a searchlight and a 23mm automatic cannon. And for more on American spy balloons and an infamous incident caused by one, please check out our previous video, The Secret Cold War Project Behind the Roswell Incident. Even in areas where the aircraft was not officially adopted by the military, civilian AN-2s were frequently pressed into service as makeshift bombers. For example, during the Croatian War of Independence, old crop-dusting AN-2s were used by the Croatian Air Force to drop improvised barrel bombs made of oil drums filled with explosives and nails. The aircraft were also used to carry supplies to isolated pockets of resistance behind enemy lines, a role for which the AN-2's low speed made it ideally suited. The Serbian air defense radars were programmed to ignore objects flying below 140 km per hour. In the early days of the war, Croatian AN-2s were able to penetrate Serbian airspace with near impunity. However, these flights came to an end when the Serbians acquired the SA-6 Carb ND aircraft missile system, which was capable of both detecting and shooting down the AN-2. Surprisingly, it is only in more recent years that the 70-year-old AN-2 has seen its most extensive and creative use as an offensive military weapon. On September 27, 2020, the Republic of Azerbaijan launched a six-week war against the Republic of Armenia and the breakaway Republic of Artak over the disputed Azerbaijani enclave of Nagorno-Karabakh, populated mainly by ethnic Armenians. In order to more effectively penetrate Armenian air defenses, Azerbaijani forces modified 60 AN-2s as crewed drones, fitting them with pneumatically operated autopilot systems. In combat, pilots would guide the drones into the air, point them toward their targets, engage the autopilot, then bail out, allowing the aircraft to carry on their course autonomously. On radar, the slow-flying AN-2s would appear as far more dangerous attack helicopters forcing the Armenians to waste expensive and scarce anti-aircraft missiles to shoot them down. Not only that, but according to the Armenian Ministry of Defense representative Artsen Hovhanisan, quote, 
We initially found out that they were used to reveal the location of our air defense system so that other small drones could strike, but there were cases when they exploded with great force after being hit. They were loaded with armaments, meaning that they were used to strike weapons as well. These bombs were also likely intended to force air defenses to engage the drones, lest they explode behind Armenian lines. Whatever the case, once Armenian forces had revealed their positions and expended their missiles, Azerbaijani aircraft and drones were free to penetrate Armenian airspace and engage targets behind enemy lines. This creative use of the AN-2 caused a stir among international arms proliferation watchdogs as it constitutes an inexpensive and effective loophole to the missile technology control regime which regulates the export and transfer of autonomous drones but not the technology to convert manned aircraft into drones. And all of this brings us back to Ukraine in the present day, for defense analysts have theorized that the AN-2 stockpiled at the airbase are being prepared for a similar purpose and may be used in the first wave of a renewed offensive against Ukrainian air defenses. But while the AN-2 remains a valuable asset in this new era of modern warfare, it is no longer because of its ruggedness or short field performance, but rather its ubiquity and expendability, proving Joseph Stalin's maxim that sometimes quantity has a quality all its own.